Hi everyone, it's Gina from Gina K Designs and welcome back to another Foil It Friday card video. Today I'm going to show you how to use Copic markers with our polyglaze foiling sheets. I'm using the new Spring Butterfly set for my card today and I'm going to show you another card using the Easter Delight. I like to use my mink for foiling so I'm going to turn it on and set it at level 3. Now some people like level 2, other people like level 4, but for me the polyglaze works best on level 3. Now here's a little trick to keep your carrier sheet clean. I have a Swiffer sweeping cloth and I'm going to use the Heidi Swap carrier sheet for this. Now I'm going to use my Swiffer to clean both the outside of the carrier sheet and the inside of the carrier sheet. This removes any dust, any little paper particles, any embossing powder or glitter or anything else that's in my workspace, and it makes sure that I get a great transfer every time. I'm going to begin with the Spring Butterfly Polyglaze Sheets, and I'm going to use some of the Decofoil Transfer Sheets in gold. Make sure you use Decofoil Transfer Sheets and not their Hot Foil, because this technique does not work with Hot Foil. You can also use Gina K Fancy Foils. Now you can see all of that beautiful print on there that's done with the polyglaze, and then we've had it tinted gray, so at least you can see where it is. Now I'm going to use one sheet of Deco Foil Transfer Foil in gold, and I'm going to place it inside my carrier sheet. So first I'm putting my polyglaze sheet down and then my gold foil on top with the pretty side up. It doesn't have to be as big as the entire piece of cardstock, it just has to cover the entire design. Now once that's ready, I'm going to feed it through my mink and then we're going to let it cool. Make sure you go in fold side first, this way your loose ends won't get wrapped around the rollers. Now once that comes out the other side, I'm going to just put it aside to cool. Some people like to send it through a second time. I haven't found a need to do that very much, but most of the time I just put it through once and let it cool. Now for my greeting, I'm going to actually use one of the transfer, the toner sheets. This is the deco foil toner sheets, and I'm measuring up how much I need to cut off of this toner sheet. This is not black cardstock. This is made by Thermoweb, and it's their black toner sheets. And that's what you need to use if you want to foil die cut pieces like I'm going to do. So I'm going to use some of the Gina K Designs fancy foils, and the color I'm using is turquoise C. Now I don't need to use this whole sheet, so I'm going to use my piece of toner paper as a guide to see about how much I need to cut off, and I'm going to cut it just a little bit bigger than that toner sheet. This is actually toner paper. It's cardstock, very lightweight cardstock, printed with toner. So you can't do this with just plain cardstock. Now I'm wiping that toner sheet down with my Swiffer, and I'm also wiping the back of the foil with the Swiffer to get any dust or anything off. And you're going to see how perfect this transfer is. There's absolutely no missing spots at all. And I really think that the Swiffer is a huge key to getting that perfect transfer. So I'm going to send it through, and then after it comes out, I'm going to let it cool for a minute, but now that this is cool, let's do the peel and reveal. Look at those beautiful butterflies. When you see these in person and you see how much beautiful detail is in there and how perfect that foil transfers, you're going to be amazed. Such a beautiful design and so useful for any time of the year. Now, once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and just peel it right away. I just want to show you how great this transfer is when you use the Swiffer. Look at that. It's absolutely perfect. That's going to be great for my die cutting. Now, I want to remind you, don't forget to use the negative. This is the negative of that butterfly. And I'm going to use another piece of that Thermoweb toner paper. I cut it down just a little bit smaller than my... Uh, piece of foil. And again, I'm using a Swiffer to clean off any dust or anything on that toner paper and also on the back of my negative piece here. 
Got to make sure that there's no dust or anything so that you can get that perfect transfer. I'm going to lay that on top, and then I'm going to put that whole thing inside of my carrier sheet. If you don't have a carrier sheet like this, you can certainly use the ThermaWeb carrier sheets. They feel a little more like parchment paper, but they're silicone lined, so you get a great transfer, and it really carries the heat. And now once again, the peel and reveal, and look how perfect this is. Every little bit of gold foil transferred, and I've got that beautiful design. You can see me in there. Hello. I've got that beautiful design, those black butterflies with that gold background. You can just die cut that out, pop it on your card, and add a greeting. Now, I'm going to color these butterflies with Copic markers. If you don't have Copic markers, you can use something like the Colorista markers, Olo markers, Spectrum Noir markers. Alcohol markers seem to work the best with this technique, and this doesn't damage the marker or the foil. Now, you can get away with watercolor or maybe water-based markers. However, water-based markers can be a little streaky. And watercolor, you have to remember that this isn't watercolor paper, so it can wrinkle the paper a little bit, pill the paper a little bit. So my top recommendation for coloring would be either ink blending or using something like an alcohol marker, like a Copic marker. So I'm going to list all of the colors that I used to color this sheet in the description here at YouTube. This way, if you want to copy this design exactly, you'll know which Copic markers I used. But you can use any colors, and they all look beautiful. So whatever strikes your fancy, go ahead and do that. Now, I'm not going to make you watch me color this entire thing, so I'm just going to cut to the good part, and you can see it all finished. So here it is, all finished with some turquoise, purple, pink, and green perfect spring colors, and all of that shine is intact. Didn't lose any detail at all. Now I'm going to die cut my forever word. And remember, this toner paper is very thin. So you can cut it with the blade side down with no problem, even on it with an intricate die like this forever die. I'm just laying that off to one side to get a little more pressure from the machine, and then I'm going to send that through. Now, when you poke this out, make sure that you use something like the Gina K Designs pick and stick tool, the Tim Holtz um, poker tool, any tool, maybe even a straight pin, something that you can poke through all the holes and release it evenly. If you only poke through one end and then pull, you could tear the design. So poke everything and just release it from the die before you start pulling on it. And look at all of that beautiful shine. Isn't that nice? I highly recommend die cutting after you've transferred the foil because if you, if you try to do it the other way, dies put dents in the toner paper and you won't get a nice even transfer of foil. Now I have a little tip for you. I'm using the larger die from Master Layouts 2 to cut out this toner sheet. The large die with Master Layouts 2 fits the small die from Master Layouts 1. So Master Layouts 2 and Master Layouts 1 will level up four levels, and you can still get the shadow layers all the way up. So I'm using the larger die here from Master Layouts 2, and I'm adhering it with a little bit of pixie tape. Then to protect the design, I'm putting a piece of copy paper on top. That's going to protect the foil from all of the little nicks and stuff that are in my plate. And it's also going to protect that beautiful white cardstock from getting little bits of black cardstock and stuff because my plates are just old and dirty. And that just protects everything, doesn't damage the foil, and just gives you a beautiful cut. And it's not too thick because it's just thin, plain old copy paper, so it doesn't add too much pressure to the machine very easy to um, send it through. And you can see that cut out that nice little white layer around the outside. And then I'm using the smallest die from Master Layouts 1 to cut a layer that will layer perfectly with that first panel. I just love the way those two die sets work together. 
Now I'm using that piece of copy paper that I sent through the machine on top of that foil piece. I'm using that as scrap paper now so that I can add some glue to the back of that forever die. As you can see, I cut that white shadow die out of the Forever in Shadow die set, and now I'm adhering them together. It's very easy to do this. You just want to make sure that you start on the left side of the design and just work your way across slowly, just slowly pressing each part into place until it's exactly where you want it and then putting pressure with your fingers. And it's very easy to layer those together. And I could have just put the forever on there, but by using the shadow die, it makes it pop out just a little bit better. You can see I decided against that sea glass card base because there's so much beautiful color in this print that I went with a white card base. And then using a little bit of connect glue on the back, I'm going to place this forever die cut. You can also use adhesive for this part if you want because this is a pretty solid backing. Or if you want a little more dimension, you can use foam squares or little pieces of foam tape. And then I added the friend at the bottom, and that's from our mixed messages sentiment sheets. I used the hello friend, and I just cut the word friend off. And so there's my finished card. Now I want to show you another card I made using the Easter Delight. Isn't that pretty? I used Copic markers to color in the eggs and the leaves, and then I used wild dandelion foil for the word Easter to match that wild dandelion card base. So these are my finished cards, and I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope you'll give this technique a try. Stay tuned to my channel for more 5-minute card videos, more Stamp and Chat Live videos, and more Foil It Friday videos, too. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again real soon.